In this video, we're gonna be ranking the most popular solar panels in a tier list so you can know the truth about which ones are actually good and which ones are just overrated. Like the first solar panel here that comes with a very high efficiency but has a very large downside to it, which many people ignore, and that's gonna be the SunPower Maxion solar panel. Now, the SunPower Maxion solar panel for a long time has been considered a tier one solar panel due to its high efficiency, output power, and competitive warranty. However, the major drawback to the system is that it forces you into using this Sun power inverter, which has not been proven to be an effective solution for homeowners. As I said, for a long time, the Sun Power was known for offering some of the best solar panels on the market. However, in 2020, they decided to exclusively begin manufacturing their solar panels with factory integrated Enphase IQ7 series microinverters. To this day, despite the newer IQ8 microinverters being the industry standard, the majority of Sun Power Maxion panels limit you to using the older version Enphase IQ7 series microinverters with their SunPower Energy Link combiner box on the wall. SunPower chooses to do this in order to sell their SunPower Complete Warranty, which has been a standard sales offering of theirs for a long time, though many homeowners need to understand that there are large drawbacks to the system. Not only do the IQ7 microinverters lag behind the newer version IQ8 microinverters in many ways, but the main drawback to the system is that you are using the SunPower instead of Enphase combiner box, making the system far less forward compatible if you were to want to get batteries or potentially other products to pair with the system. So for those reasons, I'm not a big fan of the SunPower panel and I'm putting it towards the bottom of my list here and overrated. However, for this next panel, this is maybe just as popular as the SunPower panel and it's marketed everywhere. So I'm talking about the QCell G10 400 watt panel, which I'm going to rank here in the middle of my list in the B tier. QCell has quietly become the largest manufacturer of residential solar panels thanks to being an all around very good panel at a good price. The 400 watt version of the G10 model comes in with an efficiency of 20.4% a temperature coefficient of negative 0.34% and a guaranteed power of 86% at year 25. For those reasons, the Q-Cell for five consecutive years has been the largest producer of residential solar panels due to overall making a very good panel at a good price. Many people do not know this about Q-Cell, but one of their biggest customers over the past few years has been Tesla Solar, who unknowing to many have been white labeling the Q-Cell panel as their own for a long time now. Now, if we wanna talk about top tier panels, then next we have our first S tier panel in this video that not only has incredible warranties, but to some people is all around the best residential solar panel on the market, and that is gonna be the REC Alpha Pure solar panel. The 410 watt version of the Alpha Pure module comes in with an efficiency of 22.2%, a temperature coefficient of negative 0.24%, and guaranteed power of 92% at year 25. As I've said before, one of the best ways to judge the quality of a solar panel is to judge it by the warranties that it's able to provide, and specifically the amount of guaranteed power that the panel backs up with the warranty. And with the REC Alpha Pure, you have a 25 year warranty that guarantees 92% output at year 25. The Alpha Pure panel also offers an industry leading temperature coefficient, making it a great panel for hot areas like Texas, Arizona, and Southern California. Temperature coefficient simply refers to how well a solar panel will perform when temperatures are above average. In the case of solar panels, they produce at max efficiency when outside temperatures are 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And for every degree above that, they're slightly less efficient. What most people do not realize is that the temperature coefficient rating of a panel comes out to being one of the most important ratings within a solar panel. This is because in the summer months when solar panels are producing at their highest levels throughout the year, temperatures on the roof where the solar panels actually lay in some instances can exceed between 120 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit, impacting the production of the panels massively. For easy example, in the case of the REC Alpha Pure, the temperature coefficient is negative 0.26% for every degree Celsius that the panel is hotter than 25. If temperatures on the roof were to be 45 degrees Celsius, that would mean that we simply multiply negative 0.26 by 20, showing us that the panel will be producing 5.2% less power than in perfect conditions. If we were to compare this to a lower quality panel, like per se the Jinko Eagle, which has a temperature coefficient of negative 0.36%, we would see that that panel with all other things equal would be producing 7.2% less power. Certainly don't shrug off the temperature coefficient that you see on a spec sheet of a panel as just being another number because it comes out to being one of the most important ratings of a panel. Now, while the REC panel gets a lot of attention for being the best solar panel on the market, another panel that I'd put near the top of the list here in the A tier is the Silfab Elite 
BG solar panel. Known for being one of the most aesthetically pleasing panels, the SoFab Elite, and specifically the 410 watt module, comes in with an efficiency of 21.4%, a temperature coefficient of negative 0.37%, and guaranteed power of 90.8% at year 25. One great thing about this panel is that it does offer a linear power warranty out to 30 years, as well as a 25 year product workmanship warranty, overall making it one of the best warranted residential solar panels on the market. I did not, however, put it up in the S tier list due to its low temperature coefficient, though I would still put it up here towards the top of the list, and I have seen it being priced typically better than its competitors over at REC. Now, as you have seen, I have been including the efficiency rating on each of these panels, but I would personally myself make a case that efficiency is not as important as people think. Ultimately, a solar panel's output is measured in watts. Efficiency simply has to do with the power density of a panel, meaning that if we have two panels head to head and they're both 400 watts, the panel of the two with the higher efficiency would simply be a slightly smaller module because its solar cells are more efficient. Another question that I get commonly asked is whether or not a 410 watt panel is better than the same panel that's simply a 405 watt. And the answer is no. The same panel that's offered at 440 watts and maybe 380 watts will simply be different sizes. And many contractors have simply found a sweet spot in that 400 to 410 watt range as the panel's not too big to where it's hard to design with on the roofs and it's not too small to where you're working with so many panels. Going back to another panel that's been in the news a lot lately is the Mission Solar Panel, which despite all its positive marketing, I will put in the seats here. This panel became one of the first solar panels to be completely manufactured and assembled in the USA with their headquarters in San Antonio. Many solar panels are assembled here in the States, though manufactured overseas, making the Mission Solar Panel stand out. The 395 watt Mission Solar Panel comes in with an efficiency of 19.7%, a temperature coefficient of negative 0.36%, and guaranteed power of 84% at year 25. As you guys can see here, just because a solar panel is made and manufactured in the States does not all of a sudden make it a top tier solar panel. The Mission Solar Panel on Unfortunately, it has one of the worst linear power warranties of all solar panels on the market, only guaranteeing 84% power in year 25, leading me to have to put it towards the bottom of the list. Now, all solar panels degrade over time, though some faster than others. So evaluating the linear power warranty and what a manufacturer is able to guarantee over the long term is one of the best ways to evaluate the quality of a solar panel and whether or not it will be a long-term solution. This is exactly why I believe it's important to be educated on products before falling for marketing messages, because what sometimes is branded as a top tier panel comes out to being one of the worst products on the market if you're able to find your way around a spec sheet. Another popular solar panel, which I'll have to move all the way to the bottom of the list, is the Jinko Eagle Solar Panel, which will go in the D tier. This panel for a long time has been one of the most commonly sold solar panels in the market because it's always been one of the lowest priced solar panels that you could find. That, however, comes at a cost because this panel has one of, if not the worst, linear power warranties in the industry with guaranteed power of only 80.2% at year 25. Again, the solar panel is a very popular option for solar installers who try to lead with the best price and hope that the person that they're selling does not ask to see the spec sheet. The 400 watt model of the Jinko Eagle comes in with an efficiency of 19.88%, a temperature coefficient of negative 0.36%, and that linear power warranty of 80.2% percent again leading me to have to put this panel in the D tier. Now for homeowners who are concerned about the durability of a solar panel then the next panel which can stand through big storms the Aptos DNA 440 watt module is a tremendous option which I would put in the B tier. The Aptos for a long time has been considered one of the most durable and strong panels with an industry leading snow and wind load ratings. This is a great option for homeowners in markets such as Florida which can experience high wind speeds and this is the option that I'd recommend for homeowners owners above per se the REC for that reason if you were to happen to live in those markets. The 440 watt Aptos DNA solar panel comes in with an efficiency of 20.21%, a temperature coefficient of negative 0.36%, and guaranteed power of 85.1% at year 25 with the warranty going out 30 years. I cannot however put this panel in the A tier simply due to its lower temperature coefficient. However, if you're looking for a very durable solar panel that can stand the test of time and be very durable through storms, this panel is going to be a great option for certain homeowners in particular areas of the country. And by the way, guys,
guys, if you are in the process for shopping for any of these solar panel options for your home and you would like to receive a quote for any of these systems or maybe you already have a quote for one of these systems and you'd simply like to receive a comparison bid, feel free to reach out to us by booking a free solar consultation using the link below this video and we would be happy to provide you with some options for your home. We work with a number of solar contractors all across the country to provide solar services to homeowners and we have most of these solar panel options available. Going back towards the top of the list, another panel that I would stick in the S tier would be the Panasonic Evervolt solar panel. The 410 watt version of this module comes in with an efficiency of 22.2%, a temperature coefficient of negative 0.26%, and guaranteed power of 92% at year 25. Now, one of the things you may already have realized is that this panel has very similar ratings to the REC panel, and that is because, in a lot of ways, these are the same panel. Panasonic actually got out of the solar panel manufacturing business a few years ago in order to focus on making batteries. LG did the same thing. However, because Panasonic had a strong brand name, they decided to partner with REC and white label their product. As I talked about before with the Tesla solar panel, white labeling solar panels is a very common thing that happens in the industry, especially with the big brands who do not want to open up a manufacturing facility because they can simply use their name and brand to sell a lot of panels. And so as a result, this is what you've seen happen with Panasonic and REC, Tesla and Qcell, and many other examples as well. Because all around this is still a tremendous panel, I would still put it here at the top of my list in the S tier. Now, the problem with ranking all of these solar panels is that solar panels alone are not everything that goes into a solar panel investment for your home. As I showed earlier, the SunPower Maxion was a great panel. However, due to its inverter infrastructure, it wasn't really a great system altogether. There are many other things to evaluate when making the solar panel investment for your home. So that's why I went ahead and made this video going over the five common rooftop solar panel scams to avoid in 2024. So definitely go ahead and check that out next. But always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.